All right, I'm Michael Pease. This is Abram Allred here at Grapplers Elite, and we're going to work on a Kimura today. All right. Kimura is uh, similar to an Americana, but in reverse. So an Americana, you're cranking the arm this way. Kimura is in reverse. Kimura is named after a Japanese man who uh, used this lock back uh, 70 years ago or so on a fight with Elio Gracie and uh, broke his arm with it and it kind of took on his name after that. Um, so most people call it as a Kimura. So what we're gonna do, the simple gist of it first, if you'll come in and get these grips. First of all, I'm gonna grab like the Americana with five finger grip. The exception with that would be if I have his hand. If I have the wrist, I don't want my thumb there. But if I have the hand when I do this lock, it actually will add a wrist lock to his wrist because here, if he straightens his arm, it attacks my thumb. Here, if he straightens his arm, it attacks his, it bends his wrist. So that's an exception. If I have a hold of the hand, I'll keep that thumb in place and make it a wrist lock too, okay? This arm, just like the Americana, comes under his elbow. Not way at the shoulder, but up at the elbow. And I want to grab my wrist and keep about a 90 degree bend in his elbow. Okay, so that's the grip. It's very similar to an Americana, which is up here, just in reverse. Now it is a more complex submission. There's more that you need to know, but it is a far more versatile submission than an Americana. Far more effective. One of my favorite submissions to get uh, to do because a lot of good success with it. So it, it is the most versatile submission that exists in jiu-jitsu. You can set it up from almost anywhere. We're going to learn it from side control. One of the basic other positions is guard, but uh, it can be set up someone's on your back. It can be set up with from bad positions, from good positions. And once you get that grip, often you can transition from position to position and keep that grip. Okay. So here's the grip. I've got the wrist. So my thumb's on top. I come under the elbow and I grab my own wrist again, thumb on top. Now, what I'm going to do differently is I'm going to, with the Americana, I want to keep the wrist on the ground. Now I'm going to rotate. I'm going to step over his head. To make that easier, I'm gonna overextend my body way up here, step over, and then I pull it back. And when I pull it back, I actually want his back off the ground. Now, a common mistake when people do this is they sit onto their hip. We don't want that. I want all my weight on him. So as I step over and I pull him up, I'm gonna take my hip and push into him. So my leg is gonna pull his head back my arm is going to pull his body, his hip back, and my hip is going to push in the middle. So I'm like taking his body and bending it like this, which really isolates him. So everything I do attacks his shoulder. Do you feel that tightness? Oh, yeah. Good. All right. So I get my grip, turn my hips, and again, I like to overextend where you don't normally want to be. Just for a moment, I come up and I step over his head and scoot back. And I've got that tight grip and his shoulders are tight, so I'm going to try to keep this loose as I talk. My leg over here is going to pull. This elbow is going to pull, and I'm going to push with my hip, pressing into him, and he's already tapping. Okay, from there, I eased off, and I'm going to crank this arm. So I'm going to pull this elbow towards me and push the arm back at the same time as my hips press in. That's really tight on the shoulders. Again, shoulders vary from person to person greatly. So... Ease into it, learn where your partner <laughs> kind of can go. Don't start grabbing and, and cranking on that, those shoulder locks. Nice and easy if we want to protect our partner's shoulders. All right, and then look, listen, feel for the tap. Now, I'm not usually going to get this out here, but I can. I could be going for an Americana and he switches over and I, I get the grip here. Or I go for this and he switches over and I might be able to switch. And so this following of the arm between Americana and Kimura can be normal. But I'm gonna teach you a little bit different angle. Let's put your feet this way. Okay, what I'm gonna do here is from my side control, I'm gonna move my arm over and I'm gonna turn my body so my north hip, my north shoulders, or my, the north side of my body is in the middle of his torso. Okay, and I'm gonna move almost in a straight line. Not quite though, I'm off more at an angle of his body which you'll find this arm just kind of dangles here. Come around, 
look for that grip. And I swing it out the room. And there we go. So if this is too complex for you, don't stress about it. But let's go ahead and take his arm and we'll go under my armpit here, hide it in there. This is a great time to do this. Okay, that's a good hiding place for the arm. So from here, I'm gonna move my arm, control his head, tuck that in. Tuck that in and come under his shoulder blade. I'm gonna move this arm over here and I wanna put my rib cage right here, not up here, right in the middle and I'm gonna angle myself like this, okay? So he's hit that arm, so I'm gonna go here, tuck that head in, here, and I'm gonna move up, right up onto him, heavy weight. All my weight sits on him right here. I just kind of scoot around, look for this grip. Now, I might swing under first, I might get this grip and slide that first, both can work. Do I feel heavy? Yes. Yes, <laughs> and my weight sits on him right here. It is not on the ground, I'm pushing with my toes. I take this arm, back it out and around. I step up over his head, sit him up, pull his head back, pull his hip back, push with my hip, and then start cranking. But he's already tapping. Again, that is the Kimura on Micah Peace. This is Abram Allred here at Grappler's League. Thanks for watching.